They say that breaking up is hard to do. In the case of water, it's actually really easy. And it turns out that it looks pretty beautiful too. My name is Julie Yu. I'm a scientist with the Exploratorium Teacher Institute, and today I'm going to show you how to break up molecules of water, literally, through a process called electrolysis. Stick around and I'll show you how it works. To make your electrolysis device, you're going to need two stainless steel screws, two rubber bands, and a 9 volt battery. The device is incredibly simple to make. You take your 9 volt battery and wrap one of the rubber bands across the terminals. And I'm going to wrap this around twice so that it stays put and then take the second rubber band and wrap it around the other way, kind of the narrow end of the battery. You can see that you've made a little cross of rubber bands across the terminals. These are just to help hold the stainless steel screws in place. So take one screw and tuck it under the rubber band so that it's touching one of the terminals, and take the other screw and tuck it under the rubber band so that it's crossing the other. And this is your electrolysis device. I'm going to make a salt solution out of Epsom salts to test my device. And all that is is adding it to water. The exact amount doesn't matter, it just needs to be salty. So just mix it around until most of it's dissolved. To help you really explore what's going on, it's nice to have a pH indicator, which is something that tells you whether solution is an acid or base. My favorite one is to make my own out of a red or purple cabbage. You take the cabbage and chop it up into bits and poach it in really hot water like you're making cabbage tea. Or you can mix it up in a blender. And once you strain out the cabbage bits, you have this nice deep purple cabbage juice indicator. Let's see what happens when we put this device in solution. So here's the Epsom salt solution I made. And I'm just going to place my device so that the two electrodes go down into the solution. I notice a lot of bubbles. And you may see that one side is bubbling much more than the other. I'm going to take a peek to see which side that is. So if I look under this rubber band, I see that's the negative terminal of the battery. So that's interesting, that the negative terminal generates more bubbles than the positive terminal. In order to explore this further, I'm going to try this again, but this time I'm going to add a pH indicator. So I'll just dump that solution and start with a fresh batch. This time I'm going to add in some of that cabbage juice that I made. So now I have a solution in this dish of pH indicator, which is my cabbage juice, and Epsom salts. This is a lot easier to see with a white background, so I'll just put this on top of a white sheet of paper. Now I will try again. I'm going to put my electrolysis device the same as I did before. But you'll notice that in addition to the bubbles forming as they did before, something else is going on. There are colors forming around each terminal. There's a greenish, bluish color forming at that negative terminal and a pinkish color forming at the positive terminal. This electrolysis device is using electricity to break up molecules of water. We added some salt to the solution to help conduct the electricity throughout the Petri dish. When you put the device inside the water, you notice that there is one region that's twice as bubbly as the other. The formula for water is H2O, and there are actually two hydrogen atoms for every single oxygen atom. And so just by looking at the ratio of bubbles, we might guess that the more bubbly side is hydrogen gas coming off, and the other side is the oxygen gas coming off. The cabbage juice actually helps confirm this. If we looked at the negative terminal, the bubbly side, cabbage juice turned green. That means it's basic, so it's kind of lacking in hydrogen ions, which makes sense because the hydrogen is coming out of the solution. The other side, the positive side, the cabbage juice turned pink, which means that area is rich in hydrogen ions or acidic. And that makes sense because oxygen has bubbled off, leaving the hydrogens behind. So you can see with this simple device, you can actually break up water pretty easily into its component parts, hydrogen and oxygen. Another cool thing to try is to check out the influence that a magnet has on the ions in solution. Underneath the Petri dish, I've just put one of these donut magnets that I got from my refrigerator. And now I'm going to put my device back in the solution. And you'll notice that the same things start to happen. There's bubbling at both terminals. There begins to be green color forming at one and a pink color forming at another. But you may notice that as the color forms, it starts to swirl a little bit more. 
and somehow the magnet is influencing how it swirls. You can see that there's motion forming here in the, the pink, and then there's kind of this other motion forming in the green. And this is a good demonstration of how electricity and magnetism are related. Anytime you have a charged particle that's moving, whether it's an electron or an ion in solution, it also has a magnetic field. You can actually see the impact that the magnetic field of the ceramic donut magnet is having, and it's pushing these ions around so that they start to swirl. Two quick things about materials for this activity. The first is the pH indicator. You may be asking, can I use another pH indicator? And of course the answer is yes. So if you have bromethymol blue or phenol red or something else that you like, it'll work. My personal favorite is red cabbage juice because it's cheap, it's easy to make, it's easy to get, and beautifully has three different colors for acid, base, or neutral solutions. The second thing you may be asking about is the salt that we use. Like, why can't I use a table salt in my kitchen? Uh, the truth is you can use any salt. You really need the solution to conduct electricity. But the problem with table salt is that you can get some secondary reactions because table salt is sodium and chloride. This chlorine gas can actually bubble off at one of the electrodes. So I really recommend using Epsom salts, which is magnesium sulfate. It's really safe to use. And at the end of the day, I recommend that you take what's left over, add it to a nice warm bath. There's really nothing better.